Neil Kulong. Sir, welcome. Happy New Year, sir. Can you not hear me? I can now hear you. All right, good. Well, Happy New Year. Yes. That was, uh, that was the main message. We, we didn't miss a whole lot there. No, it's all right. We're, we're all good here. In this state where the Eagles have dominated for two years now, is it safe to say the Steelers are playing better than the Eagles right now? Um, yes. <laughs> That's a weird question. Um, to, to say, this way, if we were to go back, we're going to tell Neil August of 2023, entering the final week of the season, the Steelers led by Mason Rudolph will be out playing Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. And frankly, it, it's not even really debatable. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how, how President Neal would have been able to handle that. But it's, uh, <laughs> overall, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, you get asked this a lot now. I, I, I'm sure uh, the Eagles coaches are, are sick of having to answer this week in, week out. But I don't, nothing is working for them. Um, it, it's, it's falling apart. And that's uh, something you see here and there. Um, it is a team, though, that, that's going to get the benefit of the doubt. They're not a team that uh, you, you want to have to play. At some point, you feel like they're going to get it together and get back on track for you know to, to be the type of team that they are. But um, I, I've said that five weeks in a row now, and uh, it, it's gone downhill for them. We've seen this in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, I remember back in, in uh, uh, 2020, the, the COVID year, the Steelers were winning game after game after game. It was like, this is not going to last. Just the way that they were playing, uh, it was obvious that it wasn't going to work for a, a whole lot longer. And then they lost five of six, including getting boat raced in the, the wild card game by, by the Browns. That kind of seems to be a, a similar trajectory to what the Eagles uh, have been on. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to anybody, but they, they've got a lot of questions and not enough answers right now. And, um, they're they're going to need to pull something out uh, pretty quick because their season is about to end, and, and uh, you know it wasn't that long ago that they were legitimate uh, Super Bowl favorites, and they, they have the talent for yeah. that, but it, it's not coming together anymore, and they're, they're going to need to figure out something. Why does this work at the moment with Mason Rudolph? I have watched the last two games multiple times. And honestly, it, 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 bear with me. This is going to be one of my crazier uh, analogies. Uh, the story of, of James J. Braddock, Cinderella Man. Yep. Yeah. He, um, boxer, he's a pretty good boxer. He's got things going for him in life. He's happy. The depression hits. He breaks his hand later on fighting for, for food, essentially. Uh, there's no money to be had. He's got to work with a broken hand, broken right hand. So he develops his left, and with that, he becomes a completely transformative fighter from what he was, and he can't be stopped. Uh, nobody can, can really explain it except for the fact that now he's able to fight as, as twice the guy that he used to be, hence the name Cinderella Man. He came from absolutely nowhere. Mason Rudolph took from, from his last start that brutal high against Detroit a couple of years ago. In that time with no playing time. He calmed himself down incredibly. If, if you watch his body mechanics, his feet in particular, he's calmed himself down. And with that, he's become a completely different quarterback. And I, I promise you, I am, I am not the only person saying this. There are scouts and there are league executives that are looking at Mason Rudolph right now like, that's not the guy that we saw before. Um, can we call him Cinderella Man? Sure. I mean, it, it's, you know, the value of that is really going to matter uh, going up against Max Schmeling here this, this, this weekend. <laughs> but for, for who he is, for what we've seen, he's completely reinvented himself. And the best example of that is the best throw we have seen from the Steelers quarterback this season, which is the, the, the 34, 35 yarder or so that he hit the pickings. It really put the game away. 
uh, are ready not to take anything away from Pickens. It was a phenomenal catch. Everybody's focusing on the catch. You have to look at what came to that. The throw that he made, the first word that I thought of was Roethlisberger. Mm -hmm. He stood in the pocket. He stood tall. He had no room. Top of him, with with the exception of his direct personal space, that is the only uh, uh, space that he had available to do anything. He didn't bail. He didn't protect the ball. He stood tall. He was a big guy. He was like six five. Mm -hmm. He stood tall and he put the ball out. Thickens enough. You can you can almost hear Rudolph as he's throwing it. Not too far, but not too close because because the defender is there and it's a foot race. You don't want to give the defender an opportunity to make a play on this. It needs to be in bounds, but it needs to be Pickens or nobody else. Right, right. And he put it, I mean, you know, if you really want to get technical, six inches closer to Pickens would have been a better throw. But it, where he was, where the pressure was coming in, how crowded that was, that's an incredible throw. You can't take that away from him. And I, we haven't seen a, a, a Steelers quarterback make a throw like that in a long time. I mean, it was, it was perfect. In, in any way that truly matters, it was a perfect throw under duress in a big moment. It was the clutch play of the Steelers' season, and it sealed the game. They were able to put it away at that point and get back to what they were doing, which was you know just ground it out. And it wasn't a game that they asked Rudolph to do a whole lot, but he did everything. He didn't make mistakes. In two games in a row, I felt he threw pretty much everything on the money, and then, you know, nobody ever throws everything completely perfectly. He threw everything on the money, and he came up big when the team needed him to come up big. I mean, I, I you know, they gave him six carries or five real carries. Um, he, he, he was pushing the pocket with that. These these are things that we just never saw uh, from Rudolph before. And you really have to ask yourself: it is it's fair to to say? And Tomlin made no bones about it this week at all. He just said flat out, Rudolph is is starting. And easiest decision he's made all year. You have to ask yourself how impressed they are with him and what this new offensive, you know, dual headed coordinator position can do with a quarterback that's just simply executing what's there and being perhaps a little bit more aggressive with the ball. And that's what Rudolph has done. Now I'll say all of this and, and point out that I'm ninety percent sure the Ravens are not going to allow the Steelers to win this game this weekend. They're gonna play their guys. And he's going up against the hottest defense, the hottest team in the league. I don't think he's going to have it as easy as he did. But all eyes should be on Mason Rudolph <laughs> this weekend. Right. This is the guy to watch, the, the pending free agent uh, that, that's, that's completely resurrected his career. Uh, I mean, it's obvious moving forward it's going to be Kenny Pickett as the quarterback. It's not going to, I mean, Mason Rudolph's not going to beat him out unless he somehow stays and, and beats him out in training camp. But what does this do for Rudolph – moving forward just because one of the keys to me if you're not a star in this league is to keep your career relevant what has this done to keep mason rudolph's career relevant it's an excellent question and i'll i'll call you out on this they will not bring mason rudolph back to compete with kenny pickett in training camp yeah right because somebody is somebody is going to pay mason rudolph a lot of money to not be necessarily just a, 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 a sole backup. Look around the league. To this point, um, I, I, I don't know the exact number, but several teams have had to go to their third, if not their fourth quarterback. I watched something called Jaron Hall start for, for the Vikings this weekend yeah. because Nick Mullins was so bad in their previous game, Hall had to start. They right. gave Hall a half and mercifully took him out of the game right, to put right. Mullins back in. Right, right. How much money is, is a, a, a solid, experienced veteran quarterback with a, a hot streak that he's on worth in the open market? Right now, you look at, uh, um, uh, oh my God, I forgot his name, the guy with the Jets, now with the Dolphins, I think, Mike White. Yeah, Mike the back, White. I mean, he's, he's getting $11, $12 million a oh. year. Oh. Rudolph is absolutely in that, that market. The Steelers are not bringing another quarterback back for that money, uh, considering he just played the way that he played. He's, he's able to ask for more from the Steelers, and it's going to be pay me so I can be the starting quarterback because you didn't make me the backup because of the guy you paid last year, and look at what that got you. 
you're in the playoffs if you played me instead of Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky is, is gone. He's out of that market now, and Rudolph is going to replace him. Uh, add in the value of the backup, honestly, $13 million, $14 million a year is not out of line for the top-level backup-ish quarterbacks in the NFL in this market. The Steelers are not going to be able to pay that. That's you know, right, if, right. if they've got Trubisky, which is not a good salary for them to take, I don't know how they, they are going to take that, but they're going to have to wipe out the rest of the room with the exception of Pickett, or they're going to have to give Rudolph the job based on, on what they'd have to pay him to keep him. That's the question of the offseason now, and it's the most surprising question that I think I've ever had leading into uh, a potential season finale or, or a potential regular season finale. Uh, what they're going to do with Mason Rudolph, there's, there's a huge amount of weight behind that now because he is worth astronomically more than what he used to be, and he might be one of the top three uh, quarterbacks on the market. Right, and again, in that spot's invaluable. Jack Ham and I still, you know, kid each other about Cliff Stout when he was with the Steelers. Didn't play it down. He's getting rings. I mean, <laughs> it's a great spot to be in, uh, without question. All right, so Baltimore has played not well. They they legitimately are playing great all around football right now, and we've talked about Lamar Jackson before, uh, but I want to talk about their defense for a moment. Uh, every there are certain positions that are devalued today by, I have no idea why, but running backs devalued, yet they're touching the ball left and right. Uh, linebacker is somewhat devalued. Um, wait, until I look at Baltimore. Queen, Smith, how good are those linebackers, and what do they mean, the fact that they're on the field every down? I, it, that, that's a fantastic point. It's what I've been yelling about for however long. What the Ravens don't have in terms of their skill position players, they've loaded up into these alleged uh, devalued positions. And they've invested capital in those to the point where, it, it's to, to use a, a baseball metaphor, they stack their defense up the middle. So they've got good interior defensive players on the line. They've got two good inside linebackers, roving linebackers. And they've got, in my opinion, the best safety in the game in Kyle Hamilton. They're cutting yes. down the seam completely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult to make big plays against the Ravens. So you have to go the long way against them all the time. And they have a very versatile, explosive offense that, oddly enough, uh, got better when they had to rely on, on somebody other than uh, their tight end. You know, when, when Mark Andrews is out of the picture, and I'm a huge Mark Andrews fan, when he's out of the picture, Lamar opens things up a bit more. Um, and, and he's allowing it, not the play to dictate where the ball is going, but the guys on the field. He looks like a completely different quarterback from what we've seen in the past, and even just this season, the last six, seven weeks, uh, which is when he you know clinched MVP. I, I don't think anybody else is going to get a vote anymore. Uh, he's distributing the ball a lot of different places. You know, uh, uh, Zay Flowers is a good story. He's a good player. You've seen a lot more things out of Bateman. Uh, likely he's doing well in, in uh, Andrew's absence, but it, it's balanced. Lamar is really the guy that's making all that go, and I don't think that was necessarily uh, so much the case with his passing before. It was his running ability um, that, that terrorized the league up until now, but he's become a, a pure weapon, and that's why they're, they're just running teams off the field now uh, because it, it's, it's impossible to stop him when you've got him – dialed into where everybody else on the field is. And it, it's truly remarkable uh, season overall, but in particular the last couple games, uh, to, you know, at the risk of, of you know, hyperbole, I don't know how many teams in the last 10, 15 years we've seen play better than the Ravens have the last couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I don't, I don't know who beats them the rest of the way. Uh, that, that's a pretty obvious statement, but uh, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be particularly close either. And yet here's the interesting part. The Ravens with Lamar Jackson at quarterback are 19-1 and against NFC teams. The one was the loss last year to the Giants at MetLife when Saquon Barkley at the end slid at the one-yard line and ended the game. Against the AFC North, where they're used to seeing him all the time, 
it is a fight to the finish in every game. Why do the Steelers match up with Baltimore? Because they already beat them this season. Um, to be fair, I, I I don't know how anybody struggles with the Steelers in a lot of ways. I know, and yet um, Baltimore does. They have that hex. Yeah, Baltimore, Baltimore does. Has it probably more than anybody. Yeah. Um, I, I have picked Baltimore to win the last six games, and Pittsburgh's won five of them. I, I really don't know how Baltimore has not done that yet, but I, I get the feeling Harbaugh's going to want some revenge on that uh, coming up. Uh, to be fair, I, I think a lot of it is they try to play Lamar versus Watt in a lot of key situations. They, they try to outthink him. They try to outguess him because He's, he's the playmaker. You can get him to move one way uh, in, with the idea of doing something behind him, but it, Watt never falls for, for the trap. Um, if, if there's a game that you want to watch of T.J. Watt to really highlight his uh, Hall of Fame credentials, it's pretty much any game against the Ravens. Yeah, yeah. Don't give me statistics. Watch him play. Right. Uh, he has to defend the run very aggressively, and he has to be perfect in that, and he always is. He, he plays extraordinarily well against the Ravens. Uh, that, that's a big component of it. And to be fair, um, I, I like Lamar Jackson as a player. He, he's, he's phenomenal. Uh, he's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. He's an evolutionary player. Mm-hmm. He doesn't make the best decisions all the time. Oh. Um, the last game, he made a couple really bad decisions. His receivers didn't help him out, but he, they, they did some dumb things uh, down the stretch of that game. It just seems like they get a little too far ahead of themselves. Um, it, you know, Baltimore beat themselves this past game this season. Mm-hmm. Um, Lamar playing the way he is playing now is not the same type of guy uh, I, I think that the, uh, the Steelers have seen up to this point. That doesn't mean that they can't stop him. Uh, they're pretty beat up defensively. I, you know, this, this isn't a good matchup for anybody in the NFL, uh, let alone the Steelers that have plumbers and firemen playing in their back <laughs> seven right now. They're, they're going to they're going to struggle to contain. Uh, Lamar to the point where they're able to lock into a receiver everywhere he is on the field and, and try to make plays. You can't play man against Lamar Jackson, so they're, they're going to have to do more zone. Uh, that That's not going to be a strength of theirs in this game. It's, it's a tough matchup. Um, I don't think it was as readily obvious previously as it is now. And then the Steelers have gotten away with a little bit uh, in the past. And, and credit them for, for playing the game hard, not flinching against a, a great player and, and containing him. Uh, the way that they have, but uh, this this one's going to be tough. It will be, uh, but I'll say this: plumbers and firemen are aggressive, and they will tackle <laughs> some of them. Some of them, anyway. <laughs> well, no, I didn't say. I didn't say. I did not say they had the ability to get there. But if they were there, they would. They would tackle. <laughs> I tell you, coach, I wasn't three yards away. If I was right there, I would have taken him down. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the Steelers. That's the second half of this year, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Happy New Year, my friend. Appreciate it. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about this coming year. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to every single one of them. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Neil. Neil.